Hello all, welcome again to the session. The topic of discussion will be jejunum and ileum, mainly to differentiate between the structures of jejunum and ileum. I am Dr. Ankit Hundedal, MS Anatomy. Let's start the session. Few benefits of the plus subscription over here. Q Bank with all the 25,000 plus MCQs with ex explanations. List of December tests happening weekly in an academy, both for the free as well as the plus subscribers. If you want to subscribe, there are two options of plus and iconic. Iconic, you get an extra prep letter. And if you want extra discount, you can use the code Dr. Ankit Live. You get some extra 10% discounts over here. That's how the topic of jejunum and ileum. Now, jejunum and ileum. Jejun, why do we need to know this topic first of all? Because once you open up the abdomen of a patient in an emergency or emergency laparotomy, it becomes very hard to look for a differentiate jejunum and ileum. And basically, they are not, uh, you know, this, uh, they are not different at a particular point. It's a gradual change. So it's not a sudden change that's okay, je jejunum finishes over here, the ileum starts. It's a gradual change. Second, a lot of RNA resection, anastomosis done over here, a lot of uh, necrosis can be happening over here, because it's a huge structure, it's a very long structure. So let us see over here, few points. First of all, that these are a part of a small intestine that we all know, and they are basically lying intraperitoneal, so they are highly mobile. They're highly mobile. They're lying intraperitoneal. They are a part of midgut, so they are basically supplied by the superior mesenteric vessels, giving off their jejunal and ileal branches. We already covered up the superior mesenteric vessels. You can have a look at it, right? So jejunum ileum, long tubes, jejunum ileum. Initial part is jejunum, then the ileum. Now let us first of all see a cadaveric image by which we can differentiate first of all that where do these actually lie. Now you can see the liver over here, which is uh, covering up basically the major part of the stomach. Uh, what has been removed in this dissected image, if you want to just have a look at it, understand it, then you can imagine that the greater omentum, greater omentum has been removed ap al along with the transverse colon. So that has been removed to show you that this is the, imagine that it is a part of the stomach, the, the stomach over here. And yeah, mainly the greater momentum is removed. You can see somewhat of the transverse colon going from here. So basically the greater momentum has been removed. To show you the mainly focusing on the jejunum and ileum only. So colon is also over here. Now, upper and left part, upper and left part of the abdomen basically has jejunum over here. And lower and right part is basically the ileum over here. Why? Because it will continue into the cecum. Okay, ileocecal junction. So upper and left mainly jejunum, lower and right mainly our ileum part. This on the borders you have mainly the colon over. These are all the colon ascending, transverse, descending and sigmoid colon. So that is roughly showing you where the jejunum and ileum normally lies. Now if you want to see the differences, so you can also see the differences with the barium meal and a follow through also over here. A barium meal and a follow through is showing two major differences. First of all, we can very well see the stomach with the lesser and greater curvatures over there with the doodle cap right at the upper right part. Now feathery appearance over here, that is basically feature of the jejunum, jejunum, feathery appearance. Now if you go distally, featureless part is seen the, is shown as the ileum over, that is the ileum over here, which featureless part. Why feathery? Because it has more of number of mucosal folds. If you go into the histology also, you will see a plica circularis where the mucosa itself folded, giving out a very, very velvety appearance, very, very velvety appearance and therefore it, it uh, thickens the wall of the jejunum compared to the ileum. So only if you touch it in the DH or in the OTs of surgery OTs, only then you will be able to differentiate it. Better you touch in the DH. Okay, so jejunum, the wall is very thick compared to the ileum. Okay, now let us see their differences in separated out the jejunum and ileum both. Now jejunum and ileum both. Remember the jejunum, the wall is bigger, thicker and wider lumen compared to ileum. So this upper part is basically showing you the jejunum. And the lower figure, the lower part of the gut, that is basically the ileum over here. Ileum over here. First of all, you can see the difference in the thickness and the caliber of the gut. Second part, second part, second part. What is all of this? This hole is the mesentery. What is inside it? Vessels, nerves and lymphatics. Remember three things. Vessels, nerves and lymphatics. Now, if the mesentery is very pale, light in color, and if the light is easily passed through it, like we, what we normally say in cases of uh, cystic swelling, it's a transilluminant sort of thing, but not exactly, but yeah. If the light in easily pass, it is very transparent, that is normally an area of jejunum. That is also a big hint. Now in the mesentery of ileum, it is very much laden by fat. I mean, fat is present here also, but in a very minimal amount. Here the fat amount is quite more. So there we say that it is more of opaque and we call it as a windows. The windows are absent over here. 
while the windows are present. The windows means the transparency. So transparency is more, you can see more of the vessels. Now vessels also there is a difference. What is the difference is that if you look at the vessels of the gut, and normally the gut likes, for example, these are this is the jejunal, these are the couple of jejunal arteries which are going to supply jejunum. Okay. Now they will form before they reach the main part of the gut, they'll form the arcades over here. They'll form the arcades for anastomosis between different vessels. That is why resection anastomosis is easily done in uh, case of the intestinal injury. Now they will form arcades. Now from the arcades they will give off these end arteries which are known as vasa recti. Recti means a straight artery. And these are the arterial arcades. Arcades means arc shaped. Now here what you are seeing is a long long straight artery. So they have a longer vasa recti and a few arcades only. 2-3 arcades only. In comparison to it, if we compare it with the ileum. Now ileum has more of arcades, 4-5 arcades and a very small vasa recti. I mean, the length of vasa recti is smaller. Here the length of vasa recti, as you can see over here, is quite longer. So vasa recti are long over here, arcades are less over here. The vasa recti are small over here, the arcades are more over here. Okay, anastomosis is both, in both sides, but here it is slightly more. Apart from this, you know in the ileum you will get uh, obviously the lymphoid uh, nodes, aggregates, known as pile patches. So, what just wanted to show you the difference of jejunum ileum, and if you want to see the patches, the lymphatic follicle patches, you can, you are very well know, this aggregated lymphoid follicles known as pious patches, you can also see them in histological images, pious patches over here. While solitary lymph follicles are present everywhere, even in the duodenum and jejunum you will see, even in the colon you will see solitary lymph follicles. But pious patches is a feature of ileum. Though in barium meal we can see the feature of jejunum was more feathery appearance in compared to a featureless ileum. Okay, so these are the things that I wanted to show you the difference between jejunum and ileum. I hope uh, you enjoyed it. So that's all. Thank you for your time.